Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. Thanks for clicking on my video today. I found this adorable handled pot at a thrift store for only $2 and though I liked it solid black, I wanted to change it up just a little bit and make it look like homemade pottery. Then I'm going to spray the bottom half with Rust-Oleum clear matte finish and that just helps the paint stick to the glossy surface. The color I'm using is Sheepskin by Folk Art and it's just a really nice creamy white. Once that's had a chance to fully dry, I'm adding some baking soda into the sheepskin paint and I'm going to give it a second and third coat to give some beautiful texture to the bottom part of this pot. Once I peeled off the tape, I noticed that I gave a little bit of overspray with the clear matte finish, so I used some pure acetone to clean that off and bring the gloss back for the top half. I love how this turned out. It's a really quick and easy project. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could hit that red button. I'm starting off my second trash to treasure using this candlestick that I have repainted a couple of times already. I'm going to take my chalk paint in black and I'm going to give it a good coat. Then I'm going to take some black spray paint and get inside all of the little nooks and crannies that I can't reach with the brush. Next, I'm going to take this wood round. I'm painting the bottom of it first, and once that dries, I'll paint around the edges on the top. I've centered the candlestick on top of the wood round, and I'm just going to use my pencil to trace out a circle so I know exactly where to put it when I need to glue it down. Now, this is what I meant about painting just the edges. I wanted to make sure that the bottom portion of the candlestick glues to the raw wood rather than just gluing to the paint. This candlestick doesn't have a solid bottom, so I'm going to cut out a piece of cork and glue it in, and that will give me a little bit more of a surface to glue onto the wood round. Once it's glued in, I'm going to take some extra hot glue and just fill in all of the cracks around so there's a really good surface hold. I'm going to use a combination of Gorilla Glue Clear Grip and Hot Glue to put the candlestick on the wood round. Because I traced out a circle with pencil, I know exactly where to put the candlestick. Now that it's had a chance to set up, I can finish painting the wood round. I printed out this design on water slide paper and I'm going to give it three coats of clear matte finish, letting it dry really well in between. And this will prevent the image from bleeding right off of the water slide paper. I've cut out the images that I'm going to use and I've just set the bird in the water. This is warm water and it needs to sit there for a good 30 to 60 seconds. 30 seconds is usually pretty good. I'm adding a little bit of water to the side of this white bowl that I picked up at Dollarama. I just thought it was a really pretty farmhouse style bowl. What I'm going to do now is just push off the decal from the backing paper a little bit place that part that's come off the backing paper onto the bowl and then just slide the paper off underneath. Because I have water on the bowl, I'm able to easily shift my image around and make sure it's in the right spot. Then I'll take some tissue and then just dab and push out any of the water that's underneath the image and on the outside of it. I'll do the same thing for the two laurel pieces that I have, and I will have this available as a free printable on my website. The link for that is down in my description box. I'm getting quite a few questions on how to find the description box. The first thing you need to know is if you are watching on a TV, you can't get to the description box. This is how it looks like on a computer. This is the information underneath my video and you can see the show more button. Once you click that, it will expand the view and you'll be able to see everything that I have listed in that description box. If you're watching on a mobile device like a smartphone or a tablet, you'll see just the more button here. 
press that and it'll drop down everything that you need to see. I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear Grip again to put these two together. I'll add a little bit of hot glue in the center so it just holds it together while the Gorilla Glue has a chance to set up. I'm also going to add something heavy into the bowl so it just presses it down and makes sure that it's all secure. For this Trash to Treasure project, I'm going to put these two pieces together. I've got just a cedar wood and this napkin holder from the thrift store. I'm going to mark off how long I want it and then use the napkin holder as my template. I'm going to take it outside and cut it with my jigsaw. I've measured out the center and marked with my pencil on the wood and now I'm going to be taking some Gorilla Glue clear grip again and some hot glue and I'm going to glue the napkin holder right onto the piece of wood. I'm using fusion mineral paint in the color coal black and if you live in Canada or Ontario and you need a supplier for fusion mineral paint I have a link to my friends from Tinker Decor and more down in my description box. I also really love these fusion mineral paint brushes. They work really well with acrylic paint or DIY chalk paint. Uh, what I love about them mostly is they give a nice smooth finish, but they also wash up so easily. The paint just slides right out of them. That's the best part about these brushes. You can also get these at Tinker Decor and more. To go with the napkin holder, I have these two salt and pepper shakers. These had a really old fashioned country farmhouse look to them and I had spray painted them white, I think last summer, and they've just been sitting in my stash waiting for a makeover. So I'm using the white picket fence fusion mineral paint on these as well. And I'm just gonna give them two light coats before I paint the bottom of this piece, I'm adding these little cubes that you can get in a pack from Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. And these are going to be the little feet for this. I thought it would be, look nicer if it was raised up off the table a little bit. And you can see I've got my hot glue and my Gorilla Glue clear grip. So those are the items I'll be using to attach these little feet. I'm going to now give the bottom of this tray a coat of black paint along with the feet. I used my Cricut Design Space app and my Cricut Explore to cut out a white vinyl decal for the sides of the napkin holder. This is just a white laurel design and I think it was so pretty and this was something that was already created in the Design Space app. I also cut out an S and a P for the salt and pepper shakers using black vinyl. To add a little bit more of a farmhouse touch, I'm taking my paintbrush that is already loaded with white paint and I'm just going around the edges. Now I found that afterwards this was a little too thick so I did go over it a little wee bit with the black again afterwards just to tone it down. I also added a little bit of white to the, all the raised edges of the napkin holder along the bottom and the top. I am really happy with how this turned out and I think it would look absolutely fabulous on a dining table holding some napkins and some salt and pepper. The last trash to treasure I have for you today is this chicken planter. You can see that I've already painted it with some white chalk paint and some distressed green colors, but I'm going to do something a little different with it today. I'm taking the same coal black fusion mineral paint and I'm going to give it one really good coat 
all the way around the chicken and the planter. Once it was completely dry, I am going to be using this folk art crackle medium that I have had in my stash for at least 20 years and it still works. I just put it in a little Dixie cup there and I'm going to put a fairly thick coat all over the chicken and the planter. I let the crackle medium dry overnight and now that I'm looking at it as I'm editing, I think the black gloss would have been gorgeous for this as well. But I'm taking my white picket fence fusion mineral paint and I'm putting on a fairly thick coat. I want this to have a lot of crackle to it and make sure when you're adding your paint that you don't go over it too often. That's going to disturb the crackle and make it look a little bit wonky. So you want to just try and get as much paint on your brush as you can for the first stroke. I'm not even finished painting everything and you can already see the crackle coming out on the pot. I just love how this is turning out. I'm just going to continue painting everything white and then I'll just set it aside to dry completely and watch the crackle, the magic, appear. I really love how this planter turned out and I hope you love it too. Thank you so much for watching right to the end of my video. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you could hit that like button. That really helps me get noticed on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss out on anything else I have to share. Bye for now.